welcome to the Kid Men Podcast with Dr. Val and Dr. Virginia, where we talk about everything Kid Men. And pull back the curtain on some of the surprises and challenges in children's ministry that nobody prepares you for. I'm Dr. Val, and together we have over 45 years of experience in children's ministry. I'm Dr. Virginia. Valerie and I met over 10 years ago in our doctoral program at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. We are excited to share with you all the great stuff that we have picked up over the years. We want to minister to you, the children's minister. Welcome, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. Dr. Virginia, how are you? Good. How are you, Dr. Val? I am good. I am desperately behind on preparing for Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I have nothing uh, done and I expect uh, to have nothing done for the next couple of uh, weeks. So I'm in trouble. Uh, but no, I am. I, I love the holiday season, but yeah. kind of preparing for it lately has just been a challenge. Um, it's just so much that happens during this time of year and we're so busy. Yes, yes, yes. So per, I would say personally, my preparations are not non-existent. <laughs> So there, there, things are happening, maybe not at the pace or, you know, frequency that they should. Um, I will say this, that I am super grateful. Um, I had some volunteers help come and help pack our, our family advent kits, come and pack our busy bags for our Christmas Eve services. Oh wow! And so, so I'm very grateful on the ministerial front for wonderful volunteers who have come. And so I feel like we've been like really on top of it this year and I've been super grateful for their help. So I do feel super grateful for that. Um, Personally, there's stuff to be done, but, (laughs) but ministerially, (laughs) I do feel like, I do feel like we're making progress. (laughs) Yay! Well, and that's the thing about children's ministry is that I feel like by the time an actual holiday or event gets here. We've been doing it already for so long to prepare for it that it's sort of like, oh, wow, I don't think this is ever going to be over. Like you get to that point where it's just like, there's just so much. It's like the day after the fall festival is whenever you start prepping the Christmas. So it's like, I've been in Christmas season for weeks now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so you just have to, especially if you're doing a special Christmas event, like if you're doing Mm -hmm. a big, you know, like Christmas night for the kids, or you're doing like a, even if you have planned several different events over the month of December for Christmas, then, Mm -hmm. you know, you've got to be planning those ahead. But what we were kind of thinking about for today is just some of those challenges that in children's ministry we run into during the holidays that we need to be prepared for. What are some Mm -hmm. of those things that we need to already have those plans and procedures kind of in our back pocket Mm -hmm. ready to go because we know that the season is going to be incredibly hectic and things are going to go so fast. And so we just thought we would, would cover some of those Christmas challenges that we run into in children's ministry. Yes. It's like, I just have sort of have this mental image of it's sort of like the polar express of Christmas joy is just (laughs) barreling down upon us. (laughs) And so what can we do to help us see around the bend, right. you know, and be right. prepared for, for, you know, everything that's coming um, right. and be cognizant and aware of some challenges that we could face or families in our church or volunteers in our church mm-hmm. um, and just trying to prepare our hearts and minds for the season. So, yeah, 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 I think it's good. I think it's good. All right. Well, I think the first thing that we want to start with is actually might be a little bit too late to even talk about it, but... <laughs> Uh, but we we don't want to over plan holiday activities mm-hmm. at the church. Yeah. Um, sometimes we just get so excited about the opportunities to be able to get together, to be able to do fun things. But what ends up happening during this time of year between school events and extracurricular mm-hmm. events and church events, families just get over scheduled for the month of so December. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're sometimes they're traveling to see family for the holidays and they have their own activities that they want to do, family traditions and things that they want to accomplish. And so we really just want to be mindful of family time and don't feel like mm-hmm. we have to schedule every single minute with something for mm-hmm. our families to do. And one thing that I think that I, I see at our church and that I think is easy to happen is that over the years, 
it's sort of like all these different events and things sort of get built up or added on over right. time. Oh yeah. And so, and so that almost, and we've talked about this in other episodes, that almost goes back to our staff planning times. Like whenever we're coming together once or twice a year as a whole staff, trying to plan out our year, trying to be um, cohesive and intentional in that Christmas season, right. because it is so easy over there. Cause I, I looked at our Christmas events on our church's calendar. I mean, we've got over 12 different Christmas events, Christmas parties, Christmas, this Christmas, mm -hmm. that going right. on in the month of December at our church alone. Right. And so, you know, and again, it's just sort of like all these different things. None of them are bad. I mean, they're right. all wonderful. But oh, they, they are. Sort of, you right. know, this outreach event and that outreach, outreach event and this Christmas party and that right. Christmas party and this and that, you know, it all just kind of gets added to the calendar over time. Right. And so, you know, thinking about that strategically right. um, and how we want our people to invest their time and energy and their efforts and, and how we want them to commit, you know, during this season um, can be a very valuable and constructive conversation to have, like as a right. whole church staff in right. being very strategic with mm -hmm. the season. Well, I think you have to be very honest with yourself. And I think you have to take mm -hmm. each event. I think you have to think about your vision and your mission statements. You know, what is yeah. it that you want to see happen within your children's ministry throughout the year? And then you take every single event that you are providing for the families and you measure that up against what your vision and your ministry statement is. And you decide, mm -hmm. you know, I know we've done the cookie baking night for 20 years, but is this really something that's not only beneficial for our families, mm -hmm. but does it also meet what we're wanting to accomplish in our ministry for the year. And sometimes that question becomes an obvious, yes, obviously this is exactly something we want to do, or right. it becomes maybe we're just doing this because we've always done it, but it's mm. really not something that our families, you know, maybe are invested right. in or something that is really worth that time that we're putting into it. Mm -hmm. And even if you do decide, okay, we are still wanting to offer all of these things for our families mm -hmm. I think you need to be really very careful about how many people you expect to attend, not to pressure families to feel like they have to be right. there for every single event, right. but be all right with them saying, oh, well, we can't make it to this one. Don't try yeah. to make them feel guilty or try to pressure them because you right. want more numbers and that kind of thing. Because I know that we, we want to see events to be successful and we want mm -hmm. everybody to participate. So we want to invite everyone. Um, I think that we need to be very understanding of families mm -hmm. and their time and how much yeah. they feel like they can commit and not to be too judgmental about what they choose to do and not do during this time of year. Absolutely. The other thing that you can really think about when you're doing these events for the holidays is to not necessarily feel like they all have to be events that parents drop the kids off at and mm -hmm. then leave. Yeah. Um, because it is really hard to get volunteers to help during this time of year and for other mm -hmm. you know, things because they're already so overbooked and everybody's so overwhelmed. And so sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard for your usual volunteers to help. So there is nothing wrong with saying, OK, yes, we definitely want to do the Christmas cookie baking night, but we're going to do that as a family event so mm -hmm. that mom and dad is yes. going to be there to help the kids so that that way you don't have to have as many helpers. Right. As you would if they are just dropping the kids off. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe you can utilize more of your youth helpers for those kinds of events for, you know, for that during that time. So you want to include you want to include the church in these events more more readily than just saying, OK, this is something the children's ministry is going to do. Everybody can just drop the kids off and then go and do whatever or, you know, because those can be family nights. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, and, and again, this kind of goes back to your mission and your vision for your ministry, but I think there's a lot of really strategic ways to do family nights, um, to, to have a family event also be sort of either an opportunity to model to parents, you know, discipleship of their children mm -hmm. to be sort of a launch point, you know, to send things with parents like, okay, you know, we did this great you know, cookie event and here's this thing and here's like a devotional for you to take home and do with your family. And so, so I think a lot of those family events can also be just so strategic and they can be launching points 
for equipping parents to disciple their children, for, you know, giving them resources to disciple their children, for, you know, helping them continue that conversation at home with their children. And so, so I think there's a lot of ways to be really strategic with that in this season as well. Mm-hmm. And to even you know, to utilize, utilize, yes, the fact that parents may be more willing to be involved in a different way during the Christmas season that you may not see at other times of the year. And right. so, so really utilizing that um, and being very strategic in that. Right. We did an episode last year talking about Christmas events. And mm-hmm. one of my very favorite ones that I did during the Christmas season was a big family night. Mm-hmm. And we literally, I, I typically bought those kits from um, a publisher that was, mm-hmm. was designed as a Christmas family night. Mm-hmm. And we would do the booths that had mm-hmm. the different activities and the different things. And we had a room where uh, someone would be telling the Christmas story, would be reading it from the book of Luke. And and so we had this night and we did it as stations for parents to, mm-hmm. to take their kids to each station. One was for crafts, one was snack, one was, so it was almost like a VBS rotation for Christmas. Uh-huh. And I loved that event and it was so much fun. And I had volunteers at each of those places, but yeah. just one volunteer at each booth because right. the parents did each booth with the kids. With their children. So, mm-hmm. right. So, you know, when you, when you can involve parents like that, it, I think it, it gives that community feeling more to you mm-hmm. where you're yes. fellowshipping together as families, but yes. it's also a fun night for parents to see the kids do crafts and snacks and, you know, all the little things, the games and things. And so it, it's just a fun interactive night. So thinking about how you can involve parents in what you do for Christmas is huge. Mm-hmm. One of the other things that I love to have was an opportunity for parents to be able to go shopping for their kids at Christmas. And I think that that started because we served at a church where a lot of uh, families lived without relatives near them. Mm. So they were the only ones in the community. You know, they didn't have family members. The kids couldn't stay with grandma and grandpa for the night go shopping. And so we started doing just a movie night for uh, mm-hmm. for the parents so that mm-hmm. they could drop the kids off. And it was, we did it as <laughs> we did it. We did something so that we didn't have to have a lot of volunteers. So right, I didn't do right. things where, you know, they had to have a lot of different people, but we did something general. Right. Like we had a Christmas movie night and we did popcorn yes. and candy and drinks and the, it, the parents could drop off those nights so that they could go shopping. And a lot of times I had adult Sunday school classes that wanted to do something kind for their parents in the yeah. church. And so yeah. they would come help those nights, you know, just and be okay. the extra volunteers for me. But the idea is just, you know, giving the parents an opportunity to be able to have just a minute to breathe and to do yeah. something without the kids watching during the holiday season, I think is a, a very fun thing to be able to do. But I think, you know, it's again, finding when you want to do these events, the challenge is finding the volunteers to do that. And when you can utilize maybe like, you know, a senior adult class Mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, your ladies Bible study group or, or, you know, like a group of people that don't normally help in children's ministry that can actually help on those nights Mm -hmm. Um, and give you that, that breathing room to be able to do these, you know, larger, simpler things to just help parents out. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I've seen be very popular. It seems like that's a pretty popular thing is to do like a parent's night out or like a parent shopping day or something like that. And so, you know, two, two questions I want to ask you about whenever you've done it in the past is how long did you keep the kids for? Did you keep them like on like a Friday night or a Saturday morning? And how long did you keep them? And did you have any age requirements? Like if someone brought like an infant, would you do that? Or would you just do older kids? We actually, I've done it both ways, but Mm -hmm. for the, the last church where I served, we did preschool. We actually had um, at that particular church, I had volunteers that I had paid for preschool. Mm-hmm. Like I had paid mm-hmm. preschool volunteers for special events mm-hmm. and Wednesday mm-hmm. nights, right? You know, Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, we did our own, you know, I, we had our own mm-hmm. volunteers, but mm-hmm. for Wednesday nights and for that, we had, we had paid volunteers. So I usually had the paid volunteers just like we normally did for special events that helped mm-hmm. with the preschool so that parents did get the time to be gotcha. able to actually be yeah. without the kids. And then we did 
Um, so we would have the, we had the infant room and then we did the preschool all together with a mm -hmm. little movie. So I kept, I didn't have preschool and children together there. Mm -hmm. Like I had, you know, the, the, the two year olds through the kindergartners in one area watching a movie mm -hmm. and doing all of those things. They did the same things. We just, it's just easier to me if I can separate, separate age groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I had first grade through sixth grade watching mm -hmm. a movie and doing that in the children's in our children's auditorium room. Mm -hmm. And so we just did, I like doing an evening. I just did a Friday night. We had pizza mm -hmm. and really simple things for dinner. So we started mm -hmm. it pretty early, like at five 30 or six. Mm -hmm. And then but we capped it off at like nine o'clock. So that way they right. had time where they could go to dinner and go shopping or they could just go shopping. But we just mm -hmm. did it. Um, it, it was just easier for me because it was harder for me to find volunteers for during the day or for a super right. long period of time, because like I said, right. I was paying those, uh, the, the leaders that were in our preschool. Right. Now, back before I had that kind of help, I typically had it be pre-K through sixth grade. Gotcha. And so, because I didn't have that extra support mm -hmm. in the preschool mm -hmm. area to be able to do the younger kids. So at previous churches, if I had done that for those years, I might've just done pre-K through mm -hmm. and put it that way. Um, but I enjoyed being able to, it was just nice. It was almost like a little Christmas gift for my parents to yes. be able to say, just take this night, you yes. know, we'll, we'll have the kids for you. And so, yes. so there's a billion different ways you can do it, but that's yeah. kind of how we did it. I think another challenge that we really have to think through is the fact that during this time of year, it's going to be hard to keep your volunteers in place. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of people traveling. There's going to be a lot of people sick during this time of year. There's going to be a lot of people who just kind of hit that wall of so much going on in their lives that they just mm -hmm. need a minute. And so they, they're going to call out. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you really have to be honest with yourself about mm -hmm. your volunteer needs during the month of December. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we have to remember is that you need to prepare safety first. Yeah. You know, I know that it's really easy to kind of think, okay, I'm desperate. So there's just going to be one teacher in this classroom for today. Mm -hmm. And I know that that can, can be like something in your mind that you think, okay, I don't have a choice, mm -hmm. but you do have a choice and you've got a mm -hmm. responsibility and you really have to protect not only the children, but you're right. protecting yourself and you're protecting your ministry and you're protecting yeah. your volunteers. Yes. And to leave just one adult in a classroom because you're shorthanded for the holiday is something that is just not safe for you to do. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have a plan in place for what you will do if you have mm -hmm. this situation come up, because it's going to happen. I mean, I know it can happen a lot during the year, just on a normal Sunday, mm -hmm. but especially during the month of December, I think it's just so much harder. So, and so hectic. Mm -hmm. it, it just really is. So mm -hmm. I think that you have to be willing to close a class if you need to. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a hard thing to even think about, um, but I think you do need to talk with your pastor about it. And I think you need to be prepared for the possibility that if you don't have the leaders, mm -hmm. that you may have to let parents know that you're really, you know, shorthanded for this particular session and that, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have to do something creative. And that might mean that you might have to combine some age mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. have the numbers to be able to do that and the space mm -hmm. to be able to do mm -hmm. that, even mm -hmm. if you have to do something really unique for that Sunday morning where you might do a, a larger group Sunday mm -hmm. school with larger group activities and the Bible story and those kinds of things going on with a larger group, you might have to do that with your helpers, you know, helping mm -hmm. out where they can. But I think that sometimes you have to be prepared for those combo classes or mm -hmm. just have to be willing to say, I'm so sorry, but we've had volunteers that have called out today and we're just really short handed. Mm -hmm. And so that's really hard to have to think about, but, but it, but it happens it a is. lot. I mean, it's just, it's, it, that it is not an indictment in any way of your ability to do what you're doing. It's yes. not something that you need to be, take that full responsibility for and feel mm -hmm. like, Oh, somehow I've, I've let somebody down or I've not, it's mm -hmm. not, it's just that it's 
just the nature of mm-hmm. the ministry during this time of year. It is. And that's one thing because in, in, you know, in the summer, whenever we were doing our twice a year, big calendar planning, mm-hmm. you know, in preparation for that, you know, I'm looking ahead through the rest of the year. And whenever I saw that December was a five Sunday month, yeah. With Christmas Eve on a Sunday, I said, yeah. oh, sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord, you know, give Help. me <laughs> the strength. <laughs> Help me with this. And right. so I began in October some very preliminary planning for our December volunteer schedule yeah. knowing what a booger bear of a month because five sun I mean everybody knows five Sunday months are a headache regardless right and then you add in the holidays and Christmas Eve right. um right. and so and this might know, be one of those I need to meet with the pastor kind of moments mm-hmm. where you really need to talk about the fact that for Christmas Eve mm-hmm A family worship Mm -hmm. is more appropriate than Mm -hmm. having children in the children's ministry. Mm -hmm. And again, I know that's a hard thing to say. And I know a lot of pastors really struggle with that. And so maybe the, the family worship is parents are in the children's ministry with the kids and you do something in your children's ministry on Christmas Eve but the parents come with the children. Mm-hmm. If your pastor is just absolutely, absolutely, we're not going to have a family worship on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or, you know, the week of Christmas, however mm-hmm. that falls in your calendar year for you to say, OK, well, then can we do a family Christmas in the children's ministry then? Because the reality of one, finding volunteers that are willing to serve mm-hmm. on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day it's really hard to do, but also think about what we're asking people to do. We're asking mm-hmm. people not to worship with their families on Christmas Eve or Christmas day. Right. And right. so again, we have to look at our mission and our vision for our family mm-hmm. ministry. Yeah. And we have to really help people understand that this is a sacred time of year for us and we should be with our families. We're asking Mm -hmm. for this one service during the entire year of parents being able to drop off their kids and go worship on their own. If you have children's worship, but you know, it's, we're asking this, this one special service, we really need to be mindful of families. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing, exactly everything that you're saying, like, you know, as we were doing our calendar planning over the summer and looking at this five Sunday booger bear December schedule, um, being very, very proactive um, Mm -hmm. at at our church, at least we and this is across the board um, for those Sundays around Christmas and around New Year's. We don't do Sunday school. Right. Um, and that was one of the things too, that I, exactly what you're saying, went, went to our pastors and was like, look, like the same people who show up and serve 99% of the time, if we asked them would show up and serve on Christmas Eve. Right. But it is really important to me to give them this day to worship with their families, um, Especially because in our case, we we are doing um, one family Christmas service on Christmas Eve morning. Mm-hmm. And then we're doing our traditional candlelight service, Christmas Eve candlelight service in the evening. And so, you know, we've got two different services that aren't the same. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's not, you know, it's like if they miss that Sunday morning worship, there's not an equivalent thing for them to be able to go to with their families in our case at our church. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so, so for me, it was, it was very important to, to be able to give that day to our families, to our volunteers Mm -hmm. who work so hard and who serve so diligently and serve so well. Mm -hmm. And we even kind of went through the discussion of, you know, do we get paid workers on Christmas Eve morning? Well, one, (laughs) who that's really hard to do. Who wants to to be paid even to work that day. Right. Cause we talked I mean, about that, you know, that, that I did have paid nursery yeah. workers for a lot of special events, but now when it came to Christmas, right. It's like no uh, one, you know, it's, 
it's no, not worth it, that. It's not. Right. Plus, it, especially if you're utilizing yeah. college students, they're traveling during that time of year because mm-hmm. there's no classes. So it's just, it's almost, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so just that, you know, you know, for us, we came down on the side of, okay, like, you know, we're, we're not going to, we're not comfortable asking anyone for a volunteer or for pay to give up that Christmas Eve Sunday morning with their families, because we want families to be all together, mm-hmm. um, you know, on that morning. And so even the following Sunday on um, New Year's Eve, we won't be doing Sunday school. We, we, at our church, we will be doing worship hour, right. um, preschool ministries. Right. Um, but yeah, but just trying to be very strategic and forward thinking and planning out <laughs> this right. month of volunteers. Right. Um, it does. Well, it takes a lot of work and you do. You have to be willing to sort of advocate for your people um, you if really you feel do. like that's necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you you just really do. And, and the idea is, again, even with like for New Year's, you need to be prepared and be honest about your volunteer needs there, too, because mm-hmm. there are still a lot of people traveling and a lot of people that won't yeah. come. But it's a different situation. Again, you know, combining your classes, finding extra volunteers, those kinds of things might be something that you need to do and you need to be prepared for. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not as, I think it's not as unkind to be asking people to help as it is for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Well, because it's not a religious holiday. I mean, it is, you know, I mean, it's It's a a holiday and time of the year or whatever. Yeah. But it's people that you have that say, oh, no, it's New Year's Eve service. I want to be in there. And that's fine. That's great. Mm -hmm. But again, it's it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Like so, but you do need to be prepared because there are going to still be a lot of people out of town and a lot of people that are Mm -hmm. doing things. So you Mm -hmm. have to have your plan B's ready Mm -hmm. or what if, because it could very well be that you'll be really shorthanded because even if some of your Mm -hmm. maybe subs are going to be sick or out of town. So you don't have those fallback people that you usually have. So you Mm -hmm. kind of need to be prepared with that speech of maybe telling parents, you know, I either need help, you know, during this hour or, you know, we might not be able to to have Mm -hmm. this class open during this time. Mm -hmm. But I think you have to think about too, does your church have more visitors for the holidays mm-hmm. or fewer attendees during the holidays, because mm-hmm. if you do typically have fewer, then you do have the ability to combine some age groups so that your volunteer needs are less. But if mm-hmm. you have more that usually come during this time of year, if you have a lot of visitors and a lot of attendees that come, mm-hmm. then you're going to have to be a little bit more creative with, do I have enough space? Do I have enough leaders for these mm-hmm. groups? and be prepared for that. Uh, That's something that we started talking about before we even started recording these interesting dynamics, because it seems like I've always been at the churches that have 50% normal attendance, you know, on like the Christmas Sunday, Mm -hmm. because so much of our church is going out of town. And maybe it's just because of the area that we live in. We, you know, just where I live currently, it's a place where a lot of people are like moving into the area. So they're all from other places. So right. they just kind of go back home for Christmas maybe. Right. Um, right. But we, the churches I've been in have always been in the, okay, like half our congregation leaves at right. Christmas time kind right. of churches. Mm-hmm. But I know there are other churches who they're like, no, no, mm-hmm. we are, we are grandma's church. <laughs> and right. so. Right. So all the grandkids are here. So we like double in size at right. Christmas time because, right. you know, everyone's coming to grandma's church. Right. So. I was telling Virginia too, you know, I know that there's a lot of large churches that get mm-hmm. a lot of visitors during the holidays. And these are the folks that only come like at Christmas and at Easter. Mm-hmm. And they know if they come to a large church, they can kind of come in and disappear and then leave, Just you know, back and in. forth. So they, so they tend to, it might be the church in town that everybody comes to yeah. when they don't normally have a church that they go to. So mm-hmm. you have to look at your community and what your church dynamic is and say, oh yeah, we're that church that everybody comes to, or no, we're mm-hmm. the church where everybody is headed out. So you can kind of look mm-hmm. at your numbers when you think about it that way, but it's still, it's still necessary for you to plan. Yes. You know, you, you're going to have to be very intentional in and what you're doing one way or the other. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I know that we've been talking a lot of logistics, but I think one of the things that's really important for us to think about is that we help our parents focus on the meaning of the holiday season with their children. 
Mm-hmm. It's just such a busy time of year mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. happen so fast. And there's mm-hmm. so many events and so many parties and so many things that we have to prepare for and get ready for, especially if families are traveling. Mm-hmm. It's really easy to get caught up in the mechanics of the season mm-hmm. without really processing the reason for this season. And I think mm-hmm. that's why I do like family events for this time of year, because I think mm-hmm. it helps the parents focus a little bit when they hear the Christmas story being shared when they get to do the activities that focus on different elements of the Christmas story. I think it's really helpful, but I also think that having an Advent study Mm -hmm. to give to your families is just a huge opportunity that you have to help parents mindfully slow down and really focus on Jesus with their kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you don't have to reinvent that wheel. You don't have to Amen. study yourself. There are a lot Amen. of them. There's a lot of them. That have them. Mm-hmm. And they even have them that they're so easy that you can literally put your church information on there <laughs> before you print them off for everybody so that it's, you know, it's coming from your mm-hmm. church. But you don't have to feel like you have to do that extra step. Mm-hmm. But providing that opportunity, even if you just, I mean, there's a lot of them that that, that they, you can just send a, a URL in an email mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. that people can find it. But just mm-hmm. finding some way to be able to express to your parents, here is an opportunity for you to make a spiritual connection with your kids mm-hmm. by really processing the true meaning of the holiday season together as a family. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents need help doing that because they don't know how to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice when we are able to provide the parents resources to be able to spend that time with their families during the holidays. Yeah, absolutely. And we, that's one of the things, this is our second year providing our family advent kits. Mm -hmm. And I mean, ours are super easy. We got bags (laughs) from like Oriental Training. And Uh again, no one at Oriental Training pays me to say this, but you know, we all know. We all all know Oriental Training. We all know. We all love it. (laughs) You know, we get bags from there, um, you know, little craft packs from there. I use just a free um, Advent devotional guide, you know, that we print and put inside. Um, this year, I wish I would have brought one for this episode. Um, but this year I finally, I was able to catch while they were in stock, the little like plush baby Jesuses. (laughs) So I talked about them last year. I was so sad that they were always out of stock. Yes. So our, our little plush baby Jesus, everyone's getting a little baby Jesus. I've got one on my desk and he's my emotional support baby Jesus. (laughs) So it's on my desk. (laughs) Very needed. He yes. might need to stay there for the whole year. He is. He <laughs> is. He absolutely is. Um, and so, you know, and, and just some different little activities in there for families to do. And there's so, there's a million ideas out there right. of these Advent activities that families can do. And so it's something super simple. And again, my fabulous volunteers assembled them. And so it's something that we're going to start making available, which by the time this airs, we'll have already been available <laughs> for right. a couple of weeks. Right. Um, it's a short Advent season this year. It is. And it so, is. so you're having to kind We're of making jump ours right available there. before yeah. Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just so that, yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so it is, so it's very simple. Um, but last year it was super well received by our families. They were very grateful, just like you said, for that tool, Um, Mm -hmm. to have those conversations with their kids, to have devotions with their kids, to try to refocus the season Mm -hmm. on the birth of Christ. Um, You know, some of the things that we do that that I also really like during this season is um, we have a couple different um, like family missions opportunities type things in December. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we have um, like, it's sort of, an angel tree type thing that families can do to, you know, mm-hmm. adopt um, another family or a, or a child mm-hmm. and provide Christmas for them. Um, we do family Christmas caroling to nursing homes and to, yeah. to shut ins. Yeah. And so, so I do, I, I additionally like these other, you know, opportunities at the Christmas season to one to obviously focus on the birth of Christ, but two to also mm-hmm 
utilize that as a season, you know, to, to give back and to serve others Mm -hmm. and to incorporate that service element for whole families as well. Right. Right. Well, and I think that, you know, I I talk a lot about budget because for most of my ministry, I had none. (laughs) And so I always had to be very mindful of like budget and what I was going to spend my, my very limited funds for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of children's ministers feel this need to buy something for their kids Mm -hmm. for Christmas, like that they Mm -hmm. have some sort of gift to give them. And my heart was always, if I could spend what budget I had on the things that really counted and mattered, because Mm -hmm. little toys and little things don't last and they don't really mean that much to the kids. But if I could do those Advent kits or provide Mm -hmm. Advent material for my parents, I felt Mm -hmm. like for me, that was more important than any kind of little toy gift I could give them if I didn't have the budget to do that. But even when I had the budget to do that, again, it was going to be a devotion book, or it was going to be, you know, like it was going to be something that they could only get at church that they wouldn't mm-hmm. necessarily get someplace else. And it is truly the thought that counts. It's that's really the, the most important mm-hmm. thing is what you're putting behind what you're giving. And so I love the idea of the Advent packs where they have activities to do where you can give them a little bit more than just maybe the written material. I think mm-hmm. that that's a great use of your budget for this particular time of year. So I love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as we are talking about all of these family events and family resources and family stuff during the holidays, which makes a lot of sense, um, we do want to be cognizant and sensitive to um, families in our church who are maybe celebrating their first Christmas without a loved one, or maybe this is the first Christmas after parents have separated or divorced. And so, um, so we, you know, obviously don't want to stop doing all these family events and providing all these family resources, but at the same time, just sort of being cognizant and sensitive to um, situations that may be making Christmas difficult um, for some of the families in our church or some of the children in our ministry um, and just being extra sensitive to that in this season and extra um, supportive and patient and aware Mm -hmm. um, of what could be going on in the lives of our kids and families. Right. Yeah. I think that that's a good opportunity too. if you have um, leaders in your church, senior adults or deacons or, or people, you know, families that maybe live away from the rest of their family during this time of year. And they're saying, is there something we can do for people? Is there something that we can help with? I think thinking about those families maybe that have lost a parent during the year or that have divorced to be able mm-hmm. to just say, hey, you know, can I you know, you know, do something special for them. Can I somehow help with them? Can we do something, Mm -hmm. you know, can we offer some extra hands to help put up Christmas lights or to be able Mm -hmm. to, you know, do those kinds of things, things that you might not think about, you know, typically, but that a family might be struggling with during the season, just to somehow be able to bring a little bit more cheer to them. And so I think that this is a great opportunity for ministry for us to really Mm -hmm. be mindful because I'll I'll be honest, it is really easy to be so caught up in the busyness of everything that we're doing that we kind of don't think about that kind of thing unless it's really brought to our attention. So I think taking a moment to kind of look, you know, look through your family list and think, Mm -hmm. Oh, is there somebody that maybe could use an extra little bit of attention during this year mm-hmm. and somehow find some way to reach out to them to just try mm-hmm. to let them know that you're there for them during this time of year. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I think that you really need to process as you're planning for these services is that they typically, if, if you do have the children in the kids ministry, while a church service is happening during this time of year, that those church services can run long. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, you mm-hmm. usually have like Advent candle lighting that maybe takes a little bit longer or there's special music. Adult cantata, um, yes. Yeah, or they, you know, there's all of these little things that can make the services go a little bit longer. So I think one of the great things you can do is to have some extra activities mm-hmm. in the classrooms for those teachers, because as the service goes long, your usual Sunday school material may not make it for that (laughs) entire time. Also, a lot of times um, it's the 
teachers, and even if you say, oh, well, no, our material has all of these extra activities and, and our, 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 our teachers know that, but not all teachers think through that. And so sometimes yes. they don't prepare the extra. They're still just preparing yes. what they usually do on a Sunday morning. And then yes. they are kind of stuck. And then you've got a class that's going a little crazy and things just get a little busy. <laughs> and so I, I think it's nice for you to have maybe a little box or a bag mm -hmm. of some extra activities that are mm -hmm. super simple games, super simple, no prep kind of things yes. where a teacher can just grab the bag, open it up and say, all right, great group, get into a big circle and we're going to play this game. Yes. So you have those activities for those extra mm -hmm. long Sunday services. Sundays. Yes. We always had a Christmas music night in mm -hmm. December at the mm -hmm. church for our class. Yep. And I'm telling you, it went on for so long because they did it sort of like a, anybody that wants to participate can yes. come sing. Everyone and, suggests a song. Yeah. Yes. They would do, and they would break yes. with a lot of songs in between the people that were singing. And I mean, literally mm -hmm. to the point where we would have kids that fell asleep on the floors. Parents would come oh. and get them taken out early because they, even the parents yes. knew this was yes. going too long. But it yeah. was just that yeah. special December event that we had every year that I knew was going to need some extra help because it was going to yes. be way later than anything normally that we would do. Yes. Well, we, we have a great podcast episode about low prep games and activities. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that would be one to check out. And then also, um, you know, Dollar Tree does not pay me to say this, <laughs> but I feel like they've got some good stuff this year. Um, they have some stuff that I purchased recently, some little finger puppets and like these 12 packs of like these little foam angels. And so I'm like, oh, oh this is perfect. We're oh, getting all of these. Yeah. So we're going to have all these little foam angels on hand because, you know, it's one of those easy things to pull out and everybody decorates mm -hmm. their angel and, you know, yeah. and then so you, you have that you in the story, grab bag. And then, and then you yeah. The I can't hear the story so much. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. So you can always, no. no, you can always do that. It's, it's just those kinds of things are, are just so important. And, you know, the, and it is, there is nothing wrong with saying that the preschool ministry closes at <laughs> this particular yeah. time. If there is an event that's going to go super, super long. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that you need to have that conversation with your staff and say, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if this is an event that typically goes super late, I think we need to yes. say, you know, you know, you, you don't have to go home, but, but the kids have to be but you picked can't up. stay here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So uh, that's not a, a reasonable request when you yes. have those super late night events yes. that you have to just say, seriously, preschoolers cannot, they can't yes. do it. They just can't yes. do it. Yes. I think that I've said this before in a previous episode that if I could go back and change anything that I did in ministry over the years, looking back at my ministry and my family life and all of the things the one thing that I do wish that I had done better was to carve out more time for my family. Mm -hmm. I feel like that sometimes I let myself get so overwhelmed with ministry mm. and with everything that we were doing, especially during these super busy times of year, is that I just would become singularly focused on what I needed to do for my ministry families. Mm -hmm. that I would sometimes let myself get overbooked and not be able to spend the quality time that I should have been spending with my own family. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's one thing that you need to really be willing to do is to find those leaders that can step up for you to allow you to have the moments that you need to have with your kids, with your husband, with your parents, with your family Mm -hmm. so that you don't miss all of those important things. Because, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people talk about this lately too. And I think just on social media, you tend to like hear cliches that you hear a lot. And I'm sure that we have probably said it before on here where we say, you know, the, the days are long, but the years are short. Yeah. And so when you're in the middle of it, when you're raising your children, you know, it all just 
sometimes seems like it's going by so slowly and you always have time. Like I can always get together with them later. I can always do this next mm -hmm. year. I can always, you know, mm -hmm. but I think when the reality hits is that sometimes those times go by so much faster than you think that they're going to, mm -hmm. and you don't want to miss those special moments that you can have with your own family. So you want to really think through can I find a leader that would be willing to serve on this Sunday so that I can be in worship service with my family this week? Is there somebody that could help with this family event so that I could actually go to the yeah, event? You know, can I pay in everything, but I have somebody else there that's going to mm -hmm. be the point person so that I can walk my daughter or my son through the, the different mm -hmm booths and the rotations yeah. and be able to be there with them. You know, is there a way that you can mm -hmm. find to, to share that time with somebody so that maybe you can do it for the first part of the event and they can do it for the second part of the event, just mm -hmm. so that you have those opportunities to, to spend time with your family and to take time mm -hmm. for yourself. It's really important that you do that because burnout comes hard and fast yes. if we don't allow ourselves those moments. And I think that our children already sacrifice mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. for us to be yes. children sisters. Yes. At least yes. my, my kid did. She was there yeah. a lot and she was there a lot when others weren't. And she had to be there before things and after things. And she was mm -hmm. such a trooper to help and to do. But honestly, I think sometimes we ask too much of them. And mm -hmm. so I think it's really important that we take that time with our families. Mm -hmm. when we do yeah. Amen. I think the last thought of things that you want to think about for our Christmas challenges is the fact that January is coming fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate uh, to say that because I know yep. you're in the throes of planning yeah. for everything in December, but quite honestly, you're going to have this Christmas Eve break. You're going to have this, you know, New Year's Eve break where, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not going to probably be in the office very much. You're probably mm -hmm. not going to, you know, have time to do a lot of extra things. So what you want to do as early as you can in the month of December is to look at your January calendar. Um, mm -hmm. You want to try to prepare anything that you can prepare ahead of time so that when you walk back into the office in January, you are just not slammed and overwhelmed. Because yes. quite honestly, for me, VBS always kicked off hard in January because mm -hmm. usually I was leading conferences for previews and things. So I was actually jumping into VBS like the first week of January. And yes. I was typically traveling for that. So I always had to have my ducks in a row yes. in early December for January so that that way I could actually not have to work the week of Christmas, New Year's. I could spend mm -hmm. that time with my family. Mm -hmm. So you really do want to take a few minutes in December to, to look at your January calendar and, and mm -hmm. think through what you need to have ready to hit the road right after the holidays. And we have a great episode on January planning about things to think about and things to do and things to plan in the month of January. So even reviewing that in advance mm -hmm. to plan for your planning yeah. and be prepared um, yes. can be a great yeah. idea. Yes, for sure. For sure. Well, Dr. Virginia, this has been a fun conversation. I know that Christmas can be a challenge mm -hmm. and we want Christmas to be just a joy for you, mm -hmm. a joy, Amen. not only with your own families, but a joy with your church families and to help mm -hmm. them really focus on the reason for Christmas, why we celebrate, why we do all the things that we do is because God sent his son for us. Mm -hmm. And so we need to keep that as the, the main thing, the main thing. Amen. And so we are praying for you that you're able to do that during this holiday season as always, if you have any specific questions, if there's anything that you would like us to speak about, if there's anything that you have on your heart that you're just really struggling with that you would love to have some advice for, please don't hesitate to send us an email, drop us a note, um, please like and subscribe. And we just hope that you are going to have a wonderful week and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.